this item here, Mr. Bradley. Mm -hmm. Girl in mystery drowning, Pennaquit, Maine. While her sister stood helplessly on the dock, Abigail Thorne, 26, was drowned in the bay here at midnight last night. What? According to her sister, Sarah, the older girl was about to board her ship. The Black Swan. What? Why, yes, that's the name. How did you know? How did I know? Because it had to be. It had to be. Midnight. The witching hour when the night is darkest. Our fears the strongest. And our strength at its lowest ebb. Midnight, when the graves gape open and death strikes. How? You'll learn the answer in just a moment in The Black Swan. Mystery and Terror by Radio's Masters of the Macabre. Our story by Leon Meadow is The Black Swan. It's odd, isn't it? How familiar sounds revive old memories. Listen to the waves against the dock. Yeah, it's six years since I, Amos Bradley, last heard this sound. Last stood here in the moonlight, looking out over Pennaquid Bay. And there she rides at anchor, just as she did six years ago. A black ship against the sky. Forty-five feet of black hull beauty. The loveliest sloop ever turned out in the main shipyard. Forty-five feet of unholy black evil. The Black Swan, she was named... But a better name would have been Ship of Death. Yes, she was even launched in blood. Henderson! Oh, Henderson! See my son any place? Hello, Mr. Thorne. Left right on deck. Well, how do you like the Black Swan? Uh, lighter. Fine talk about a ship built for Fred Thorne. Well, Fred thinks she's the trimmest job he ever turned out. Trim? Ah, a pleasure ship. Well, what are you waiting for? Will you tell Fred I'm here? Oh, yes, sir. I'll get him just as soon as we check the keel plate. Yeah, we're going to launch her in a few minutes. Stay around and watch her hit the water. Yeah, stay around. Watch. Old, broken down Caleb Thorne. That's all he's good for, anyway. Stay around. Watch. Hello, Father. How are you? Stay around. Watch. Watch as good as buried. And built for a girl. Think your sister will like it? Abby will be pleased, Father. It's a fine birthday present. All right, men. He's just about ready. All set here, Fred. Okay, Henderson. I'm coming down, too. Want to check the clearance. I'll see you in a minute, Dad. Go on, go on. All right, over here. Captain Thorne will stand here and watch. A worthless, peg-legged old man. The sea is the Lord. The sea giveth a man his life and taketh his life. Stand aside, Caleb. Uh, what's taking him so long? Seems to be... What's this? Fred! One of the braces, Father! It slipped! Hey, Henderson! Henderson, you fool! Get down here! The braces are given away! Fred! Son! Get out! I've tried to! I've got me wedged in! If I move the other brace, I'm afraid! Henderson! I mean, Fred, just hold on! Hurry! She's starting to fire! Yes, launched in blood. Murderer of Fred Thorne. The black swan never left the yard. For months, she lay there on the waves like a stranded whale on a beach. There was talk in town about old Caleb turning strangely on the one thing he was supposed to love, his daughter Abby. But I dismissed it as idle village gossip. Actually, no one knew very much about that family. The Thorns kept themselves on that little island of theirs. You can just make it out. 
Yeah, they're beyond the breakwater. And then one day, about six months after Fred was killed, I ran into Philip Hazlitt on Main Street. Hi, Amos. Just the man I want. I'm looking for a first mate. Yeah, since when? Well, I had a note from Abby yesterday. She wants me to bring the black swan out to the island. The black swan? I thought the old man... Changed his mind, I guess. No, you never can tell with him. But, Abby, I, I mean, after what happened... I... Oh, come now. You certainly haven't started believing that old wife stuff. No, no, of course not. But the old man swore he'd never look at the ship again. Search me. Well, anyway, I'm to bring her out Saturday. You want to come? Yeah. I think I do. Here, Amos. You, you take over the wheel. She handles like a dream. Well, Fred knew how to build them. Now, watch it. She's trigger light to the touch. Well, maybe this is the turning point. Maybe now... Well, maybe now Abby will set the date. Now that she's put these childish fears behind her. You've been patient, Philip. I'd wait forever for Abby Thorne. How about the old man? You know how he feels about Abby or how he was supposed to. You'll just have to learn to like it. Cut her closer to the boy. That's it, Amos. Right. Now, a few points. Ah, there we are. There's the dock. Abby was standing there on the little dock, waiting for us, waving to us as we anchored in the cove and jumped into the dory. A dark-haired, willowy girl. Lovely girl. And next to her, next to her was Sarah, Sister Sarah, 14. A smaller, incredibly faithful replica of Abby. Except for her eyes. Her piercing, stony blue eyes, which were like Caleb's. Frighteningly like Caleb's. Abby had planned a picnic for us at Arrow Beach on the other side of the island. She and Philip had set out first to get away from Caleb, I suspect. And I was to bring Sarah along later. Well, just as we were about to leave the house, Caleb stopped me. He'd scarcely uttered a word since our arrival. I want you to see something, Amos. Oh, all right. You come too, Sarah, to Fred's room. All right, Father, only I know what it is. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sarah knows. It's our secret. We keep it locked in Fred's room. We waited till Abby was gone. Abby's left us. Left? Oh, Father means she's with Philip. Yeah, Abby's gone. Abby's left us. See him? It's on the floor there. Why, it's a tool chest, complete set. His tools, Fred's. All his tools. His planes and chisels and gouges. And all the bits and braces and mallets. All his tools. Aren't they beautiful, Amos? The way they shine? We keep them shining and clean. Just the way Fred always kept them. It's our secret. Uh, Abby doesn't know. Abby's left us. But Fred is back now. See all his tools. And someday, Father's going to take them and put them all in that big chest. And bury them out at sea. <laughs> That's what Sarah and me planned. Only now I have a better idea. You didn't tell me, Father. You didn't. <laughs> Where, Father? Where could there be a better place? <laughs> There's a better place, all right. Well, go on, go on. Get to your picnic. <laughs> There's a better place, all right. <laughs> I don't remember much about that picnic. Except Abby's unusual quietness. Philip's efforts to keep the conversation alive. And Sarah's strange restlessness. She stared at me constantly. Warning me silently with those intense blue eyes. Warning me about that secret of Caleb's. Well, I was glad I know that when we finally said goodbye late that night. Rode out to the Black Swan and cast off. Amos, I don't get it. Get what? The ship, the way she's acting. She's not responding. She's sluggish. Ah, temperamental. Where do we get out beyond the cold? She feels the wind. Looks stiff out there. Hey! Hey, that's the jib. Came loose from the cleat. 
I'll go for it. You take the wheel, Amos. I don't like the way she's handling. She's nosing down in this heavy stuff. Okay. Hey, the wind shifted. Bring her about. I know. I'm, I'm trying. She won't, she won't take it. Pull her over. All the way. Quick. I, I got her over as far as she'll go. You better get the mainsail down. Push. Hey, watch it, the man. Yes, he was gone. Swept overboard by the backlash of a splintered mast. Lost in the darkness. Philip Hazlitt, second victim for the Black Swan. Somehow, I managed to get the Swan back. And shortly afterward, I left Penniquit to work in Boston for my uncle's engineering firm. I heard nothing from or about the Thorns for a year when I received a short, formal note from Abby. Her father had passed away peacefully in his sleep. Well, I would have been less surprised had Caleb's death been more violent, had the Black Swan somehow been involved. And then, once more, Penniquit and the Thorns receded into the past. Three, four, five years slipped by uneventfully before the Black Swan again revived my half-forgotten fears. I uh, had just returned from a conference to find Miss Brewster, my assistant, standing at my desk, glancing at the evening newspaper. Uh, she looked up as I entered the office. You're from Penniquit, Maine, aren't you, Mr. Bradley? Yeah. Yeah, what about Penniquit? Oh, well, uh, this little item here. Possibly you know the girl. Sounds positively spooky. Listen. Girl in mystery drowning. Penniquit, Maine. While her sister stood helplessly on the town dock, Abigail Thorne, 26, was drowned in the bay here at midnight last night. What? According to her sister, Sarah, 20, the older girl was just about to board her ship. The Black Swan. What? Why, oh, yes. That is the name. The Black Swan. How did you know? How did I know? It had to be. It had to be. The dark of night, and a ship with a past that is just as dark. What would you expect of a ship that was launched in blood, but... Murder! At and the Black Swan. Who has the ship of death singled out for its next victim? Listen as Amos tries to find the answer. So you didn't think a ship could be a murderer? <laughs> First, Fred Thorne, who built the Black Swan for his sister Abby. Then Philip Hazlitt, who loved that sister, Abby. And then Abby, lovely, dark-haired Abby herself. And who's to be next? Well, that's why I'm here now, why I've come back after all these years to Penniquet Bay. I'm going to find out tonight. Yeah, I know, it's late and dark. Care to come? No? Can't say I blame you. What's that? May storm a bit later. Well, fine. That suits me just fine. I'm going out there, see? Sailor myself. Before this night is done, I am going to know the answer. Mm. In pretty good shape after all this time. Somebody must be taking care of her. Somebody is, Amos. Very good care of her. Abby! That surprises you, Abby coming back here. It can't be. Do you need a flashlight to reassure you? Wouldn't Abby's ghost be more companionable in this pale, thin moonlight? It's you, Sarah. Little Sarah. 
For a moment, I... I thought I was Abigail. Yes, Amos, you were the one who always said I was the image of it. I am. A pale image. A reflection without substance. Come over here and sit down, Amos. After all, we have a lot to talk about. You want to know, don't you? You came back to find out about Abby. The black swan? Yes, Amy. But the paper didn't say how or why, did it? It didn't tell about the fights we had, Abby and I, after Father died. The bitter fights we had about the black swan. Until one day, a few months ago, it was. Oh, why not, Abby? Why not, Stellar? What's so precious about that horrible ship? I won't, that's all. I won't. Hasn't she caused enough grief? <laughs> Let her rot to pieces in the harbor. I won't sell. You're afraid, aren't you? Afraid she might kill someone else. Yes. Yes, I'm afraid. Then make sure she never has another chance. Sure. How? Destroy her. In the harbor. Destroy her? Yes, Sarah. Yes, why not? We some gasoline at the house. We could burn her in the harbor. Tonight. <laughs> That's what you were going to do that night. Yes, Amy. We put two cans of gasoline in the dory and rode out to the Black Swan. But it said in the paper you were standing on the dock. I was. We were about halfway out when suddenly a strange feeling of terror swept over me. Put back, Abby. Put back. Not now, Sarah. No, this is the way it must be. No, I tell you, no, I don't trust that ship. You won't ever have to again. I can't, Abby. I can't. Take me back. Help me, please, or I'll jump overboard and oh, swim back. All right, all right, I'll put you ashore. And then I'll come back, and I'll do it alone. <laughs> You see me standing there watching the dory and that choppy swell. Do you see me standing there watching Abby get to her feet a gasoline can in one hand? Do you see it happening swiftly, without warning, the black swan rolling violently, swamping the dory? Do you see Abby pitching forward, her head striking the black hole? Do you see her plunge backwards, her knees catching the gunwale, her body snapping like a broken oar? Her head beneath the water. When I got there, she was dead. The black swan again. Yes, the black swan. And we're the only two left who care. And we've come back to find out. Amos, who loved my sister in silence. And Sarah. And Sarah, who? I might have told you once. But you went away like the others. I've come back, Sarah. Yes. Because there's no rest for you either. No rest until we know. Look to the anchor, Amos. It's time we did know. My friend at the dock was right. It's going to storm. Yes, I think so. And we haven't learned anything. She's handling like any other ship. Only better. It's Fred Builder to handle. She's biding her time, that's all. What are you thinking? Do you remember the picnic that day? Yes, sir. That night, after you and Philip had left, I went to Fred's room. They were gone. His tools, the chest. Gone? You mean Caleb? Yes. Father had taken them away while we were picnicking over at Arrow Beach. Taken them where? He wouldn't tell me. He said he'd found a better place. He kept saying that over and over, but he would never tell me where. Poor father. Yes, sir. He changed so after Philip was killed. How? Oh. Well, it goes back to Fred, my brother Fred. Don't you see, Father commissioned Fred to build the black swan as a birthday present for Abby. It was one of the ways he thought he could, well, buy Abby away from Philip. And Fred was the first victim of the black swan. Yes. And then, Philip. And the more Father tried, the worse it became. Abby wouldn't talk to him, not a word. In death... Philip took Abby further away from your father than he could possibly have done in life. Philip's death? No, Amos. Philip's murderer did that. The 
the black swan. We'd better put her about and head back, Sarah. I don't like the way she's blowing up. And I don't care, Amos. I feel so different now about everything. Now that the swan is behaving herself? Yes. Well, maybe so, but the weather isn't. Now that you've promised to come back to Boston with me and to leave all this behind you, I'm not taking any chance. Anywhere you say, Amos, anywhere. Because now I'm free. See how she's riding the storm? It's as if she were free, too. Any sign of that breakwater yet? I should catch it in the next lightning. It's somewhere off port. I know it is. It can't be far now. Keep your eye, Peel. I am. There, Amos. It is. It's... What did you say? Off port now. Hold her till I tell you, then cut in. I think we can make it on one run. Okay, say when. All set. All set. No! Swing her in now, Amos. I... I am. I'm trying. I'm giving it everything I... No, Amos. Quicker, we'll hit the rocks on the other side of the end. She won't go over. Put her about then, quick. She won't. She's not answering the helm. She's gone dead the way she did the night, Philip. <laughs> It's all right, Heavy, Sarah. I mean... <sighs> You're safe. It's all over. Oh, Amy. Amy's the ship. Finished, dear. All finished. Can you sit up? Here, take my hand. Look, Sarah. I want to show you something. Over there. Can you see? See? See what? You mean the shining? Yes, sir. It's half submerged. Why, they're... No. No, they can't be. They are. They're his tools. Fred's tool chest and everything. Father. Father did it. Yeah. When Caleb said he knew a better place, he meant in the ship. Oh, Father. Father. Yes, he took the chest and nailed it up under the deck. Up at the bow. That's why the black swan acted so strangely the night Philip and I left the island. But, Amos, tonight she was acting so beautifully until... I know. That's because somehow all these years she's been rocking there in the harbor. The chest worked itself loose, just loose enough so it would shift with the ship's motion. But then, I mean, what happened when we tried to bring her in tonight? Well, my guess is that the chest suddenly got itself wedged in tight in one place, off center. That's why she wouldn't answer the helm. Fred's chest... Yes, Amos. Yes, that's why she rolled so badly the night Abby and I... Don't, Sarah. It's all over now. Yes, it is over now, isn't it? It was almost over for us. And then no one would have known. We know now, Sarah. Yes, the black swan has been brought to justice. And by her own hand. wild, strange family, and a ship that was launched in blood. With such a setting, it's no wonder that what was meant as a tribute and an act of love turned into... Murder! At Midnight! with us again when death comes in with a rising tide and the clocks 
Strike 12 for murder at midnight. Our storyteller, Amos Bradley, was played by Lawson Zerby. With music by Charles Paul, Murder at Midnight was directed by Anton M. Leader. Thank you.